let's make a beat with the step sequencer and explore some sounds in the sound library. When I started using the step sequencer in Logic Remote, I fell in love with the ability to just be able to tap in notes with my fingers instead of clicking things in with the mouse. It just expedites the entire beat making process. And having this be a native feature built right into Logic for iPad is so amazing. So let's explore some sounds and make a beat. I don't want this drum kit. So what I'm gonna do is click here to open up the browser and I'll go back here so you can see the main page of the browser. So the browser is kind of like the loop browser plus the sound library combined into one single browser. So this is where you can pull up different instrument patches, audio patches, loops, samples, plugin presets, etc. You can even access the sound library from here as well. So if you find that when you download Logic for iPad for the first time, the number of sounds is limited. However, if you want to download more sounds, you just click get more sounds here. And this will bring you to the Logic Sound Library page where you can download different sound packs, different producer packs, instrument packs, drummers and kits, etc. For now, I don't really need this, but one other thing I'll show you is if you click manage packs up here, you can see all of the packs that you've downloaded and all the ones that you haven't. So I'm gonna click done to get back to Logic and I'm gonna go to instrument patches and what I want are some drums. Now one way to do this is you just click search and you can type up what you want. So I could type up drums and then you can choose other modifiers. So I could choose full kit, I could choose electronic music and then this will give me a set of uh, instrument presets I can pick from. Another way to do this, if I clear all here, is click here. This will show you all of the modifiers or the filters. So once again, I'll choose drums, I'll choose electronic, and the one I'm gonna go with is this one called Big Room. And then I can just close out those filters. So I can click there to audition it, or I can click and hold and drag and drop this on top of my existing track. Now, if you wanna delete an existing pattern region, you simply just tap on the region, then tap again, and you'll get this dialog that pops up. It's almost like your right click function, and then you can delete it. And then if I wanna move the playhead around, I can do that. So let's set the playhead back to the beginning. Now what I'll do is tap here, and I can create new MIDI regions, pattern regions, or drummer regions. So I'm gonna create a new pattern region. You simply select the region, and then you click here to open up the editor associated with that region. Another way to do this is you can tap and then tap again, and then you can click edit and then show in editor. Now each of the editors are going to have this option in the upper right corner that will allow you to sort of maximize that editor. You can click again to minimize it, but you can also manually uh, drag the editor to resize it. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to set the cycle range around this region so that I can loop it. So to do that, you just tap on it, go to cycle and then you can set a selection or rounded selection. And now when I press play, the cycle range will loop that region. And the C shortcut, if you're using the magic keyboard also works here. Okay, so let's enter in some notes. Now, if you're scrolling through all of the different rows in the step sequencer, you're gonna wanna do it over here on the left side. Otherwise you're gonna accidentally enter in a bunch of notes. But what you can also do if you wanna see more rows is you can click here and this will sort of collapse the rows down into a smaller view. So let's create just a basic four on the floor pattern. Just like that. And we'll add in some snares. Let's add in some claps. Now, if I want to adjust the velocity in the step sequencer, all of your edit modes are up here. So on off is just turning the steps on or off. I can click the next one and that's velocity. Now this is again where I find the Apple Pencil really useful is for making fine adjustments in the editors. So maybe I'll just do something like that. Now let's say I want to extend or change the length of the pattern. I can come up to length here, 
and I can make this any number of steps I want. So let's make this 32 steps. So here are my first 16, then here are my second 16. In my first 16, I'm gonna go back to on off mode and turn a couple of these off. So now this is my pattern. Okay, cool. So now what I'm gonna do is close out the editor and let's say I wanna take this beat and move it over. One thing you can do is you can just use the trim tool here that's sort of built into the region to extend the region. There is also a cycle or loop mode up here where you can loop regions, uh, but for the step sequencer, we're not necessarily going to do that. So I'm gonna go back to the trim tool, but I do wanna copy and paste this over because I want to use this as the basis for another beat that starts at bar five. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can tap on this, go to edit, and then you can choose to repeat the region. You can also select the region, tap again, hit copy, set the playhead where you want it to go, and then tap here and select paste at playhead. So that's another way to go about it. But for these step sequencer pattern regions, you can actually just trim them out and it just extends the range of the pattern. So let's open this one up in the editor and let's uh, add a harder kick drum. Let's remove those other ones. Just like in Logic for Mac, you can click and swipe to enter in notes in a sequence, just like so. Let's go back to this one. Let's remove these. Let's add four more up here. Okay, so in this one, I want some hi-hats. Now, there are other edit modes up here at the top of the step sequencer. So just like in the Mac version of Logic, you have velocity, you have gate, you have tie, uh, note pitch, octave. And if you want to access the rest of the edit functions, you click here. And then we have note repeat, loop, chance, offset, step rate, and skip. The one I want to use is repeat. And again, using my Apple Pencil, this is really... Uh, nifty. I can add in those little extra note repeats wherever I want. I can do twos, I can do threes. And if you want, you can also use the E shortcut, just like in Logic for Mac to hide or show the editors. So that's how you can use the step sequencer to make drum beats and how to use the browser and sound library to access all of your sounds in Logic Pro for iPad. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. And please let me know in the comments below what other Logic Pro for iPad tutorials you'd like to see. I plan on doing full tutorials for Beat Breaker and Sample Alchemy very soon, so definitely subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated on when those tutorials go live. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.